you got into meditation in the seventies, right? And as just like, uh, were you trying different modalities of like how to deal with your? Do you consider yourself when you go ne- when you go? Do you go negative on yourself? Oh sure. What's what's the tone? Well, why are you even doing this? You ever hear this on stage while you're performing? Why are you doing this? You you shouldn't even be on stage. You should just be a writer. You're obviously just a writer who is performing these things. And the audience can see right through it. You can, think that. Well, the negative voice. Right. The negative you, so voice that's your on. negative voice? Or yeah. you're trying to predict mine? <laughs> no, th- we all have it. We yeah. all have it. Even the great Jerry Seinfeld hears a voice. You're not a comedian. You're a writer. Yeah, you're a writer who's faking being a comedian. <laughs> Does it say you sp- should specifically write for Dave Chappelle? Or does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> huh? Um, and and that and that has it gotten better? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I after- mean, we don't lose it. We don't. We, it never dies. But we can uh, de-emphasize it. We can recognize it. We can even play with it. But Did- get, but just to get back, I just wanted to comment yeah. on the uh, meditation and the other spiritual things comes from the same kind of instinct of comedy of what well, what's what is really going on here you know what i mean whenever you make fun of something you're the great the orgasm uber bit that you do trying to make a woman have an orgasm is like ordering an uber right because you open the app and you hit the button and you go all right it's coming in seven minutes And then a couple minutes pass, you're like, oh, great, it's coming in two minutes. All right, I can see the little car, that's good. And then some more time passed, and you're like, it's coming in five minutes. Why is that car spinning around like that? Wait a minute, ride canceled. I hope this doesn't affect my rating. Okay. So what is really going on here with this orgasm? Why is it five minutes or eight minutes? Yeah. What's, what's going on? Yeah. That's where that bit begins. Yes. And then you find this wonderful analogy and you work it all out. But this is what philosophy is. This is what uh, whatever your spiritual explorations are. Life itself is, there's got to be some uh, better explanation for what's going on than what I could just see. I had a thought so about So that's what gets you interested in philosophy. And right, it do you it, let's say meditation, let's say spirituality whatever you want to call it. Do you you pursued it though, right? You yes, were like I this is something everything. I need. I need this in my life. No, I I wouldn't say that. I was just very curious. I'm still a very curious person. Yeah. Which that's just a, you're lucky if you're blessed with that that you're just curious. You start I'm I'm I want to know more about podcasting. I would never do it. Um, say that now. No, I won't do it. Fine. No, it's great for you guys. <laughs> I did it. Yeah. I, no, I, I know I, you I did, did a you did comedians and cars as a podcast. Like it's not really. No. I mean, <laughs> I did enough. I put enough out there. They know who I am. They, yeah. You, you know. got the people are pretty clear on what's happening. It's, yeah. Now, do you? Okay. So the spiritual stuff and is just born out of curiosity, and yeah, then you curiosity. Try, you pursue it, and you go, oh, this is better. This is it's easier to be me if I meditate. It's not spiritual. Okay. It is for some. Yeah, it is for some. It is for some. That's what I'm saying. Like, so for you, it's just more like brain maintenance. TM, yeah, TM, Transcendental Meditation, yeah. is a westernized version of, uh, you know, Hindu or Indian meditation. Is that, wh- and you do TM? Yeah, I do TM, yeah. Got it. It's very western. Okay. It's like Barry's boot camp. It's like just some very western idea yeah. of how to do something. Okay. And and you see it as as just uh, good mental health, like maintenance. More than uh, upkeep. mental, physical. I'm tired. I'm working. I'm tired. I got to do a show. I need I need a quick, deep rest, and I can't do on my own. I can't just lie down and fall asleep. I need a way to rest. This is here's how you rest. I have a really like regimented meditation practice. And I exercise. What's the, how, when it's, when you say regimented, what do you mean? I do it twice a day uh, for about half an hour Mm -hmm. and I just sit there. Mm -hmm. And that's like, it's hard time to, it's hard to find the time Mm -hmm. sometimes. 
Um, but um, I do some different kinds of forms of that. And they'll also do like a VR f- form of it. If I really can't pay attention, mm. I'll actually put on a headset and do it that way. And that helps. And how often do you exercise? Every day. Just like long walks. And so that's at the park with her. We knew where it was. Um, <laughs> where all the shit is. Uh, <laughs> shit park. Um, and that's that's the only thing. That's, that's the thing that's worked the best. And I sleep about 12 hours a day. <laughs> God damn it, you're interesting. How did you realize like, no, 10's not enough. It's 12. It's got to be 12. It's really like, and I ha- I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it can't be every night that I do that, but as much as I can. Why can't it be every night? Because uh, I'll do sets and then like I'll do sets and then they'll like it'll be uh, later and then I'll have to get up earlier to do something. Or if you're like shooting something, you have to get up earlier and it's hard to, you know, make time to sleep. But if I can, I try to sleep as much as I can. From the outside in, it's I think a big part of being a human being is figuring out what works for you. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, try something else. Yeah. Don't worry about judgment. No one's paying attention. Mm -hmm. Just sleep 12 hours a day if you have to. Yeah. And walk and put on VR headsets. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're going to do drugs. Yeah. (laughs) And or die or whatever. Like something. So it's like whatever you got to do. That is a good thing that that, uh, is granted to people trying to get sober is like whatever you have to do is okay. Because anything else might kill you. Yeah. Now, yeah. do do several people try to take advantage of it? They do. Yeah. But I think it's good advice for normal people. Yeah, um, it is. But you tried therapy, mm-hmm. medication, mm-hmm. and probably 10 different pills. and So many th- different kinds of And the diet and, thing. And yeah, the, and everything. And it just didn't, just anything like that didn't work. And then I, I realized that, I mean... Talk therapy, I could probably go back to, and then I'll do like um, group therapy, and then I have a meditation teacher who, you know, then I'll do longer meditations with, with that group, and that's really great, um, and that's more of a sort of a social thing. How f- it's so fun to just like go to somebody's house and just sit there with people and mm-hmm. not talk. It's yeah. really cool. It's kind of perfect. I love it. I a love lot it. of uh, connections is physical. Yeah. Keep me company. Yeah, feels good to do that. What's the best? experience you've had meditating meaning how far can you how far out can you go i don't know i mean it's really like i can't really the best is when it feels almost like i'm sleeping you know the best is when it feels like a nap and then it's really refreshing you know and that's really great um sometimes i just am fidgeting the whole time sometimes i'm just like sitting there thinking like a mile a minute like just about dumb shit Mm -hmm. and I can't, but it's that, that continual going back to it. It's really amazing how you start. And to when get you don't do it, you peace. miss it, and you're like, "What's what did oh, fuck?" Yeah. Well, when I don't do it, then that rigid sensibility of like, "Oh, why did you, you know?" Then I'm like, "Why didn't you do it? You have to do it." Like, you know, I get very anxious about not doing it. What's the upside of rigidity? That you do it. That yeah, it, I know. It, it'll it'll give you it's discipline. Yeah, you're yes, and and have you figured out the difference between discipline and rigidity? Because I don't think they're. <laughs> I think that the dis- the difference is is just how you look at it. Like you're not uh, punishing yourself for not doing it. That you're not like angry that you didn't do it, or that you're just like frustrated, or that you're like getting to the point where you say fuck it and I don't want to do anything. Yeah, I guess it's also like the what is the goal? Mm. So so you would say that the depression is like in remission, so to speak, yeah. or you've got it sort of like over it's in there. remission because it could definitely come back and i've had moments or moods where things get, get like i get disappointed about something and then like i was disappointed about this um romantic relationship that uh didn't work out from about three years ago mm-hmm. and i was so disappointed and i had to really look at why i was so upset about it because i didn't like fucking him at mm. all Every time I would go to fuck him, I was like, I hate this the whole time. But I really wanted it to work and it just wasn't going to work. And I was like, why? What, what about it? Do you want it to work? You liked him? You liked I liked him, to him and I liked being around him. And I liked yep. the idea of him more than actually being with him. Mm-hmm. So it was I was in love with this idea of this person 
that wasn't really who he was. And so Did he realize that? I don't I don't think so. Did he ever go like, "Hey, I don't, it was I he, think he just wasn't aware. Yeah. And it was so upsetting to me. And I realized it didn't work out because he wasn't who I thought he was. And I was creating this on my own. And then the disappointment of the fact that I created this relationship in my head that wasn't real at this age was really like, that was depressing to me. So that took a little bit of more meditation, like made me commit more to this idea of like going and, um, taking classes and working out with other people, this concept of silence, like the the true art of it, like trying to quiet your mind. It's funny, you would think that is the discipline of being uh, getting older is you're like, I can't believe I'm still doing this. Yeah. I fucking can't, I would have thought. And some things do just sort of evaporate. Yeah. Some bad habits, but there are habits where you're like, this, I thought we did this in 96. I do like to meditate or I do like to contemplate God and the transcendent mystery yeah. of the universe. And this helps fulfill me. It helps reduce my anxiety. So in Buddhism, the number one teaching is that life is suffering. Mm -hmm. um, that really, the word that was used was called dukkha, which is Sanskrit or Pali for anxious discontent. Mm -hmm. So life is anxious discontent. Wouldn't yeah. you kind of agree with that when you, uh, people? Yeah. yeah, Neil. Anyone watching so this, yeah. Centrally, uh, anxious discontent rules a lot of us. And the Buddha taught that there is a way out of suffering, which is non-attachment. And yeah. that's, that's the whole idea is that if we are not attached to outcomes and the things of this world, the kind of like status, uh, wealth, um, you know, these things that, that drive us and that we have a lot of fears, that we will actually find great peace. So this has partially been a therapeutic journey, it's partially been a 12-step recovery journey, and it's partially a spiritual journey of non-attachment. I'm much less attached to the outcome of like whatever the hell Hollywood thinks happens to think of yeah. me. You know, whether Judd Apatow casts me in a movie or not is not going to affect my self-esteem at this point. But it's it's been a long, it's been a long road. With Buddhism, whenever I've approached it, as something I could aspire to do. Um, I think w when people think about Buddhism, they'd go, well, then I'm, I'm not. So you're saying if I don't, if I don't worry about status or money, I'm not going to have status or money. And I want it. I want it as an American. I want it as a person. Mm -hmm. I think people in tribes want to probably be like, I wish I was a little up higher up in the hierarchy. I'm not going to do anything, <laughs> but I, I aspire to that, right? I think with the thing that people don't understand about Buddhism is that you're gonna still want that. Yeah. You're gonna still want all the status and the hierarchy and the, and, the, and the money and the fame and all that stuff. But at least if you have a Buddhist practice, you can release from it. Yes. And it's not 24 hours a day. We all know you gotta make a living, but it gives you, it's a, valve for yourself it is another self-interest mechanism where yeah i get oh wait this is a way okay i just for i can be like oh i can be in the i can be closer to central creation force and not so dogmatic about like money fame yeah success talent women right men whatever and part of it is just physiology so at the core of our brain is the amygdala which is like i want to fuck I want to be protected from the elements. I want shelter. I want nice stuff for a number of reasons. One of the things nice stuff gives us, as you can see on Instagram, is it gives us increased status mm -hmm. because we are social creatures. Mm -hmm. And even down in that base fight flight area of the brain is also like, I want to be beloved, right? Which is my issue. And uh, so when you can unpack that, those forces, the reactive forces like no, I want, and it, yeah. and it's anger, and it's greed, and it's lust, and it's envy, and all of that base stuff. It's all down there, and it, it helps us as animals. It's, it's, it's saved us. But then, as you start moving into the prefrontal cortex, prefrontal cortex, you can start to kind of have an awareness of like, oh, I'm detached. Oh, there's my lust. Oh, okay. Healthy lust is a good thing. You want yeah. to desire. You want to be desired, and you want to desire your partner or whatever. You know, healthy greed, I wanna have a nice living, I wanna support my family, I wanna have some nice things. 
there's there's a healthy mechanism, but you can literally move that thought process from that that base reactive animalistic part of the brain and start to bring it up into the prefrontal cortex. And that's where wisdom lives and abides. And that's where non-attachment is. So you're talking about having a healthy relationship to accruing things, having a nice career and supporting your family um, in a healthy way, but that there's a physiological and 12 steps does that. The addict brain is down there too. Like I want stuff. I want to drink. I want to use this drug. I want to jack off whatever it is. And, um, as you go to a 12 step meeting and you share and you unpack and as you pray and you say the third step prayer and as you make phone calls and you journal and you do your steps, it starts to go up, 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 up. And your prefrontal cortex has a greater awareness and an ability to unpack that addiction. Then when that addiction strikes, you're like, oh, hi addict, you're trying to grab me by the throat, but I see what you're doing. I love you. I make a phone call. I say a prayer. I meditate, whatever it is. And then that impulse lifts. Buddhism or even Eckhart Tolle or any of these, it's the basic spiritual practice is you just, you're just going to change. You're just turning the knobs yep, a little bit of your brain a little bit and you do it every day and it affects the overall ecosystem. Yeah. It gives another, a healthier ingredient yep. to this, like what feels like a boiling, scalding soup and you just go, okay here's a we just turn uh, right huh. i've prayed a lot i've been on my knees a lot i've meditated a lot pretty much daily and uh a lot of therapy and you know i'm i'm better now than i was so i'm actually uh happy been like these last 10 years i'm like i've been really friggin happy with less upkeep Meaning, I'm just looking for convenience no, look, and ease. Look, um, no, it's it's it. Unfortunately, it's it's regular twelve step meetings, yeah. regular therapy, daily meditation, keeping track of you know like like um, insulin. The, in, you know, yeah, keeping diabetes. my my diabetes in check, yeah. which is my anxiety. Unfortunately, there is a kind of a dailiness and a weekliness to it. But you can, it's not that much. It's a couple hours. It adds up to a couple hours a week. Yeah. There's a lot of hours in a week. Yeah. It's 24 times seven, which last time I checked is- Incalculable. They can't, uh, they can't figure it out. Number of hours. I have no idea. 168, yeah. maybe. And uh, you can spend an hour of those 168 talking to a therapist about, you know- Wait, 24. <laughs> 24 times 10 it's, would be 240. 240 times seven. It's more than what I said. It would be no, and it's twenty four. No, times it's, seven. no. I, what I said, one hundred sixty. Yeah, it's one hundred sixty eight hours. Spend one of those one hundred sixty eight hours in therapy. Spend two of them in some kind of recovery meeting. Spend a, we're around a total of two, two of or those, three percent. A, a total of those in some kind of prayer or meditation, which you can also couple with being in nature and exercise. And you know, it's a handful of hours, four or five it's, hours a week. Yes, which is where are we at? it's around, uh, f let's say it's less than 5% of your week. You can make your life a lot better. And yeah. then once you're there, you can start trying to be of service to other people, which you can just be of service to other people and it makes yourself feel good. You can yeah. just start by doing it because it benefits you. Because when you- Yeah, self-interest, again, self-interest. Yeah. But And then hopefully maybe you can move out of that a little bit and really do it for truly, uh, uh, What's the word? Um, Connected, spiritual, yeah, yeah, social, um, socialist, yeah, true, true, egalitarian, true yeah, yeah, community, altruistic, yes, motives, yes. So you can add that once you get yourself balanced, like you said, like just take care of yourself, like make yourself a little bit better. Yeah, that's true. And then you can make the world just a little bit better. You can just a little bit, just put a little spice here and there. It doesn't have to be anything much. Get your cul-de-sac together, have a barbecue. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.